Hey everyone, it's a uh, Friday night. I just got ready packing my stuff for a living room concert in Munich. Um, some lovely folks down there invited me over. And while I was packing my things, I started to think and reflect about all the living room concerts I played in the past and kind of my journey, you know, how I started growing my audience playing living room concerts around the Benelux in Germany. And there were some very funny experiences and one of them I would like to share with you today. So here's a bit of a backstory first. When I was in school I started playing music and started playing concerts in Luxembourg. I would do a lot of little festivals, I would play like open mic nights in the Grund, which is a, a district in Luxembourg City where there are a lot of bars. And You know, I started playing some shows, started building a, a little following, a very local following there in the area. And then I kept doing that for like the few years until I graduated uh, school. So I graduated when I was 18 in 2016 and I already knew that music was something I really enjoyed doing. But I wasn't sure yet whether it would be something I wanted to do as a profession or as a hobby. And to give myself a little bit of time to kind of find the right path for myself, I decided that I would first do a university study, I did a bachelor's, and I did it in political sciences. Also something which I really enjoyed doing. So I thought, okay, look, I'm gonna do this, this degree, and in this time period, I'm going to figure out what I really want to do. Now, having said that, within a couple of months of starting the degree, I knew music was my thing. So, you know, but I pulled it through. I did everything. I graduated. For university, I moved to Maastricht, which is a southern town in the Netherlands. And it's not a big city. It's got roughly 100,000 inhabitants. But I didn't know anyone, and I wasn't used to really building a following out of nothing. I mean, I had done it in Luxembourg, but I was kind of there anyway, and it, it kind of happened smoothly, you know, via via, and I wasn't really actively thinking about building a following. But in Maastricht, I knew I wanted to start a career in music. So I thought to myself, how can I reach out to people that I don't know, meet them, build relationships, and share my music with them? And then I had the idea to play living room concerts. In Maastricht we have a Facebook group which is called Sharing is Caring, which I think has 10,000, 20,000 members at least, uh, residents of Maastricht. And in that group people post anything that they may need or support that they give. So somebody may have a question about um, where can I find the best restaurant? People will give you advice. Other people will say, hey, can somebody help me? I'm moving out. Does anybody have a van? You know, these types of discussions. And so one day I thought, okay, I'm going to make a post in that group and tell people that I'm a musician. I'm new in Maastricht. I want to play living room concerts. So I posted a picture of myself, a link to my website. I said, hey, I'm Josh Island. I do rock, pop, soul music. I would like to play in your living room. All you have to do is send me a message and we'll fix the date and I'll come over. So, post. Quite nervous, because I didn't know how the response would be. But it was overwhelming. And within a couple of weeks, you know, people were sharing it immediately. People were tagging friends like, hey, shall we do this next week for your birthday party? People were sharing it with like parents and neighbors because they knew they had events coming up. So they wanted me to be part of that event. So within a couple of months, I did over a dozen, over 20 actually, over 20 living room concerts around Maastricht. And, you know, each night, 10, 20 people, it was a lot of fun. And sometimes more, sometimes 30, 40, and sometimes just a handful of five. And one of these shows where there were maybe five to 10 people ended up being one of the best living room concerts of my life. I was invited to play a concert on a Monday night to some of, for some of my study peers. Uh, they were a year above me, but they were also studying European studies. So this girl invited me over. She said, would you like to play in my dorm? I said, yeah, no problem. So we fixed a date and on Monday night I went there with my guitar 
as is the case in the Netherlands, everybody is on a bike. So, you know, cycling with one hand, with the guitar holding it in the other. It's all natural to us Dutchies. So I arrived there and the host was very nice. There were a couple of friends that she had brought over and we had a really nice evening. It was nothing super special. It was just a good vibe. You know, sometimes you have these extravagant living room concerts where people even prepare uh, like buffets of food and they invite like the whole neighborhood. You know, it was a small, humble concert. Played the show, everything was lovely. And at the show was one guy called Jan, Jan Klein. Um, he was also studying European studies. He was a year above me. And we started talking and, you know, just chatted a little bit. He was from Germany and, you know, he had a good time, asked a lot of questions. He seemed like a really friendly person, somebody you would want to be friends with and somebody you wanted to stay connected with. So, okay, we, we hung out that night and then, you know, we went home and um, didn't really stay in touch much after. But then one day I get an email from a foundation based in Germany. It's a foundation which is connected to a political party in Germany. In Germany, all the political parties have their own foundations. And they reached out to me and said, Hey, Josh, I heard about your music via Jan Klein. And we want to book you for a show to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Maastricht Treaty. So I was like, wow, this is really big because the Maastricht Treaty, which was signed in 1992, was kind of the, the founding of the establishing of the European Union. And I was quite shocked but really happy you know that Jan had put forward my name because he actually worked th with the foundation he did some work there so you know they knew each other and this word of mouth um, promotion is really helpful in these situations because the foundation trusts Jan's instinct that I th that he thinks I could do a good job at the show so I was invited to play this concert and there were a lot of VIPs um, there was Federica Mogherini, who was the high representative for foreign affairs, really big position, and it was a great concert. Um, the Maastricht Treaty was literally the original copy was lying in front of me while I was comp I had composed a song about the Maastricht Treaty, which was really funny. I remember writing a song just for that event with all kind of uh, original lyrics and you know just yeah an event which otherwise is fairly stiff and formal, I gave it a very light-hearted component to it. So I think people really enjoyed that. Now at that event was the governor of Limburg. He was obviously invited because Maastricht is in the region of Limburg. It's like um, basically like a state, you know, like a region. And the governor of Limburg, Theo Bowens, he was really happy with the performance. He really enjoyed it. So he, he put my name forward to the municipality, who would also be celebrating the Maastricht Treaty at a later event, because this one was more closed. So the Maastricht municipality invites me over to play the same song again for, again, a whole range of guests uh, in all spectrums. And it was a great concert. It was at the Town Hall of Maastricht in December of, I believe, 2017, because that was 25 years. It was signed in 1992. It was a great concert. Uh, beautiful, like, chandeliers hanging down and great lighting, great uh, tech, great sound, um, great mood. Um, at that concert, it, here we go, I think you see what's happening. It kind of starts out in the living room and the, you know, all these connections and are being built, all these follow-ups. At that concert was a representative of the Benelux Union. Now, the Benelux is the union of the Netherlands, Belgium and Luxembourg. Together they form the Benelux. And he said, well, we are celebrating the 60th anniversary of the Benelux and we would like you to come and play. And this was a crazy concert because this would be attended by the heads of state of the three countries. So you had the King of Belgium, you had the King of the Netherlands, and you had the Grand Duke of Luxembourg, along with ministers, um, representatives from uh, the EU, from NATO, 
a whole wide range. You had media there. There was media from all over Belgium at that event. It was crazy. It was the craziest concert I've ever played in my life. It was in the Bozar in Brussels, which is a massive concert venue. Um, I don't think I was ever that nervous in my life. I was all dressed up in my suit and played the gig. It was amazing. And after that, I've come to realize that all of these concerts were connected to one living room concert that I played on a Monday night in Maastricht in a student town with five to ten people in the room. There happened to be one guy there, Jan, which I'm very thankful for. Thank you, Jan, if you're watching this video, who spread the word and thanks to him, I got a lot of other concert invitations. It just makes me feel very humbled and, and happy that these living room concerts were really kind of how it all started out. Um, so yeah, there's a story for you with these living room concerts. As I said, I am heading to one tomorrow in Munich. And in fact, I still play living room concerts. If you would like to have me over at your house, all you have to do is to send me a message, let me know where you live. And obviously, I mean, you know, I'm based in Europe. If you're asking me to come to Texas in the US for a living room concert, probably it's a bit too much, but you get the idea. If I if I can maybe combine a couple of dates or if I can put a, a string of shows together in, in Europe or, you know, in the region, uh, we'll make it work. And what I love about living room concerts, just to close off, is that they are so personal and so intimate in people's homes that you forge a connection, a very personal connection um, with the host and the guests. It's a connection that otherwise you cannot really establish when you're on a stage and it's a, it's a public performance. Plus, from a promotional aspect, you can invite these people over to public concerts after because then slowly you're building fan bases. And most importantly, you are building relationships with people that you meet you stay in contact forever, they really become true dedicated fans and living room concerts I think are the most fun concerts to play. That's my honest opinion. So thanks to everyone who has already invited me over. Um, if you would like to invite me over, let me know. Go to my website, send me an email, um, send me a message on Facebook or Instagram. And yeah, if you're an artist watching and you've been thinking about doing living room concerts, go for it. It's a lot of fun. And I think it's also a good way to practice your interaction with the crowd and your, your kind of stage presence and your storytelling. So, so yeah, that's, that's the story that I have for you. Um, a humble little living room concert led to a performance of the, the Royal Heads of State of the Benelux, thanks to Jan. Um, I think that's it for today. Just a, a story I wanted to, to get out and share with you all. So I'm going to head off to Munich for the Living Room concert tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye, guys.